Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Anne's. This evening we're celebrating the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our opening hymn is number 599, Christ Be Our Light. Please stand. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the dark. For peace, our world is troubled, longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us, make us your living voice. Christ be our light, shining. Shine through the darkness, Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My friends, this weekend uh, we celebrate Laetare Sunday, uh, a, a word meaning let us rejoice. Uh, it is a, an imperative. We are, we are commanded by uh, the upcoming celebration of Easter uh, in just a few short weeks uh, to rejoice. You know, God has sent his son into our world uh, that uh, he would die and rise from the dead for us. Uh, the, the rose color that I wear today is, is uh, the, the church's uh, sign of that, that joy-filled hope that we have. And as we prepare ourselves now to enter into these sacred mysteries, let us begin by calling to mind our sins, as we ask God for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. 
Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces of fire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have the rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout the kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land, we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there our captors ask of us the lyrics of our songs. And our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. 
by grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. So I do love Leitari Sunday. I love my rose vestments. Although I do say, I, I, these particular those vestments, as you can see, I'm kind of like drowning in them. I think this was you know, made for a much larger, taller priest than I. So, um, so I, I was thinking, uh, you know, <clears throat> recently about a, an, a particular anniversary that I had. And I, I realized, actually it was, it was today, uh, that I realized that it's been 30 years uh, since my freshman year of college. Oh, 30 years. Jeez, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I remember when I turned 30 and I thought that was, you know, kind of a long time, but now to look back and say I was, I was in college 30 years ago. And, and I remember the, the first day uh, that I moved into college, my mom, I went to a college about 30 minutes from my home and my mom drove me down uh, to the dorm and uh, I'm one that doesn't necessarily like to be really early, so I didn't come at 10 o'clock in the morning like a lot of the other kids did. I, I came about 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, and by the time I got there, uh, my roommates had already uh, arrived and they had picked their beds. I happened to be in a room and there were four of us uh, in a room. So, so I got there and I, I got the last pick of the beds uh, and the, the, the spot I got was right behind the door. So every time the door would open, it would slam into my bed, you know, which was not always fun. 
And, and I remember, you know, kind of coming in, into town, and my mom didn't know the town really well. And one of our first uh, introductions to the little town was her going down the wrong way on a one-way street. And of course, it happens to be at just the moment that a policeman is coming down that street. Uh, but I think in that town, they kind of know that that's probably going to be the norm, so they kind of let us off. Uh, when we got to the dorm, uh, my, my roommates were there, and I, I was you know, unpacking my things. A couple of them had already been there for a few days. Uh, but one of my roommates uh, was there, and his mother was there. And she was helping him get everything together. Uh, and my mom was helping me put my things out. And, and I remember something that the mother of my roommate said. And she was talking to her son, and she said, you know what? I've got an idea. And she said, why don't you put your dresser here so you don't have to look at him? <laughs> and I, my, 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 I think my, my jaw dropped at that moment. I, wow, that was a nice introduction to, to college. <laughs> So, so we, we kind of got everything figured out, and you know, the year went fine. I remember that day my mom and I, we went out for, for supper. We, we had Long John Silvers, and, and she left me. You know, that was the start to my, my college career. I, I know not everyone has like, that, that kind of a, a positive experience when they go to college for the first time. But, uh, there, there's a story, uh, some of you may know uh, a gentleman by the name of Jeff Cavins. Uh, he's actually a, a, a local Catholic celebrity. Uh, he lives up in the cities, and uh, he writes lots of books, uh, has a lot of Bible uh, educational resources uh, to help the Catholic world really learn the scriptures. And he tells the story of when he took his daughter to college uh, for the first time. And she was a freshman uh, at Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio, uh, which is on the eastern border of the state, bordering on West Virginia. And he says he, he, they drove out there a thousand miles to get there, and they, uh, he put her, uh, brought her into the room and brought all of her things into the room, and he knew that, that the time would eventually come, it would be time to leave her and come back home. And as you might imagine, you know, with any father, any parent, you know, that they kind of dread that moment when they have to kind of leave their baby behind and let them be on their own. And, and he was feeling that too. And so instead of just kind of like leaving her at the dorm, he, he said, you know what? I want to take you somewhere. So he took her uh, from her dorm, and they went uh, to the base of a large cross, which was on campus. And it's a 60-foot steel cross that overlooks the entire campus. You can see it for miles. Uh, kind of oversees the, the interstate, and uh, you can actually see it. Uh, it, it faces uh, east towards uh, West Virginia. And he said, I want, I want it so much to just leave her at the foot of the cross. Uh, because he, he knew that she was going to have hard times. There were going to be challenges uh, during that first year of college, and uh, she would not have daddy to kind of go to or mom. But he wanted her to know that, that you always have a place at the foot of the cross. You can always go to the cross in those times of need. And I think that's, that's, that's a beautiful testament, uh, not just to Jeff's uh, faith, but, but to, to the Catholic faith, that no matter what we go through, we can always go to the cross. Go to the cross. You know, what does that mean, though? You know, I, 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 I will, if you know me and you have conversations with me, and you, 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 might, you might hear me at times uh, say, leave your burdens at the foot of the cross. But what does that mean? You know, I, I think, you know, we, we look at the cross and you come into churches and we have a beautiful crucifix here. Uh, Jesus in the middle crucified John and his mother Mary on either side. And it's, it's more than just looking up at the cross and saying, you know what, that's a beautiful image of our Lord. And it's more than just looking up at the cross and saying, wow, that's really sad. You know, we look up at the cross and we see a man the very Son of God, who chose to give his life for us. You know, and, and it really, you know, the first thing that should come to mind is, is asking ourselves, why did he do that? Why was he willing to give his life for us? And it's out of love for us. You know, that's, that's so fundamental for us to understand. Every time we look at the cross, Christ did that for love of us. When we go to the foot of the cross, we, we look again, and we, we, we look up there, and we realize 
that that uh, is our Lord. That is a Lord who, who understands everything that we go through, all of our struggles, all of our hardships, all of our sufferings, and all of our pains, no matter what we have gone through. He, has, he can identify with it. Physical suffering, yes, he knew it in spades. Emotional suffering, being abandoned by his friends, he knew that. Spiritual suffering, when he looked up to, to the heaven and said, Father, why have you abandoned me? He knew spiritual suffering. Reminds us that no matter what we go through uh, in this life, Jesus identifies with our suffering. The Son of God identifies with our suffering. What a beautiful thing. But, but there's so much more even than this. You know, this is so much more than just, you know, feeling good because Jesus loves us. And it's so much more than, than just uh, realizing that Jesus supports us. This is that recognition that, that in his giving of his life, he gives meaning and he gives purpose to our suffering. He redeems us. He saves us when he gave his life upon the cross. There's power in the cross. And, you know, the, the gospel really highlights this power, the power of the cross and the power of Christ's sacrifice when he gave his life on the cross. The gospel today from, from John, uh, it tells how Jesus was speaking to the Pharisee, Nicodemus. You know, the Pharisees were religious leaders, uh, and usually most of them were against Jesus. But this man, Nicodemus, actually was very curious, and he wanted to know Jesus. He, he perhaps even wanted to follow Jesus, but he wanted to find out more. And so Jesus talked to him in the middle of the night, and he's, he's giving this, this instruction. And uh, we hear him speak today. He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the, the Son of Man must be lifted up, that all who look on him may be saved. Now, this reference to Moses and the serpent, a very interesting story if you're not familiar with it. So Moses, of course, is the one who led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, and they're wandering through the desert now for 40 days or 40 years. Uh, and, and along the way, they're, they're on this road, the, what's called the, the Red Sea Road, and the Israelites are complaining. And it's like, why did you pull us out of Egypt where we at least we had food, food and we had water, but here we're out in this desert now, and we are going to die of hunger and die of thirst. And God hears those complaints, and he decides to punish the people by sending serpents, snakes among them, and they bite the people, and many of them die, we're told. But, but God instructs Moses, and he says to him, I want you to fashion a serpent out of bronze and put it on a pole so that whoever was bitten takes a look at that. They will live. And so that's what he did. And as, as many people as looked at it, they were healed. They lived. And, and this is a, a meant to be a foreshadowing as Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up that serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, only not on a pole, but on the cross. Jesus would be lifted up on the cross, and he would die. And whoever, so whosoever should look on him, those who are dead in their sins, or dying in their sins, might be saved. No, it's, it's really a beautiful thing. But it's more than just like this, this like magical moment where we just kind of look and somehow this, this totem or something kind of gives us life. But it's, it's the power of what Christ did on that cross. You know, St. Paul in his second letter to Corinthians said that Christ became sin for us. He became sin. Not that Jesus ever sinned himself. He, did, he was not a sinner but he took on the entire load of every human person, their sins. And he was carrying that weight when they hung him on the cross. And he took on the ultimate punishment for sin, which, which was death. He didn't need to die. He didn't sin himself. He didn't deserve to die. And yet he took that upon himself. And by doing that, in dying and then three days later rising from the dead, he conquered the power of sin and death forever. That's 
wonderful news. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever should believe in him might not perish but might have eternal life. That's the gospel story. You know, from the very beginning of creation, God had a plan for us. He created us to be in this perfect relationship with him. That we are going to live in perfect love, perfect obedience. There's going to be joy and peace in our hearts at all times. There's nothing in the way until sin entered in. And now that touches each of our hearts. Creates this heavy burden that we carry with us throughout life. But God has an answer to that. And we hear it today. God sends his only son who would take on that burden and he would die on the cross. He would free us. He would save us. He would redeem us in our sinfulness. And the only thing that remains is, is our response. What do we do in response? We come to him. We repent. We believe in him. We allow ourselves to be filled with his Holy Spirit and then we live our life faithfully within his church. This is the invitation, and this is a beautiful invitation that our Lord gives to each and every one of us. But here's the, rub, here's the rub right here, is that even should we do that, we know we're still going to go through hard times. We're still going to, to suffer the consequences of sin. It's just part of our, our human uh, 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 nature. But what do we do when we go through those moments? What do, we go through when we, what do we do when we go through those consequences of sin, when we're in pain, when we're suffering, when we're going through hardships and we're going through challenges? I will tell you what we do not do. We don't nurse it. We don't curse it. And we don't rehearse it. You know, so we, 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 don't, we don't pity ourselves. We don't uh, be angry about it, and we don't live it over and over and over in our heads and our hearts. But we bring it to the cross. We bring it to the foot of the cross, and we leave it there, and we allow our, our Lord to take it upon himself because he's already proven to us that he has, and he's going to be victorious when he dies and he rises again. That's transformation. We come to him today because... God so loves us that he sent his son, Jesus, so that as we believe in him, we might have eternal life and abundant life in this one. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my friends, let us turn to our Father in heaven, laying before him all of our needs and petitions. For Pope Francis, our bishops, all priests and deacons, 
for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith. May they approach the throne of grace at all times to assist them in their call to preach the gospel message. We pray to the Lord. For a deep respect for life at all of its stages, from conception to natural death, and for an end to all practices that threaten the dignity and sanctity of life, we pray to the Lord. For all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, May God grant them merciful healing, the strength to endure their sufferings, and the courage to unite their sufferings to the sufferings of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the gift of good health, true joy, and peace in our hearts, and unity among all nations and people, we pray to the Lord. Lord For our parish and school community of St. Anne's, May our worship of God in the Holy Mass unite us in a bond of deeper faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. For the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Bob Doring, may they know the mercy of God and rise with him to new and eternal life. We pray to the Lord. And God, Almighty Father in heaven, you know the deepest needs and deepest desires of our hearts. Hear these prayers that we raise before you today and answer them all in accord with your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, any little ones among us who have an offering to make, you are invited to come forward to place it in the basket at the foot of the altar. As the gifts are brought to the altar, please join in singing number 597, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Shine. 
and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again 
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, his assistants, Joseph and Michael, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your and let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here, and we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory. to touch you and be healed. Gather all your people and hold them in your heart. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Now we repudiate your love. We bring the bread and wine to share a meal. Sign of grace and mercy, the presence of the Lord. We remember how we loved you to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Christ, the Father's great amen. To all the hopes and dreams of every heart. Peace beyond all telling and freedom from all fear. We remember how we loved you to your death. 
and still we celebrate for you are with us here and we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory lord we remember we celebrate we believe Christ revealed in every person standing by your side. Give to one another and temples of your love. We remember how we loved us to your death and still we celebrate for you are with us here. And believe that we will see you when you come in your glory lord we remember we celebrate we believe Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, continue to... Uh, uh, invite you to take advantage of all of the, the Lenten offerings of grace that uh, you can receive throughout these weeks. Uh, confessions uh, are taking place on Saturday mornings as well as Saturday afternoons on a regular basis throughout the Lenten season. Uh, we've increased our Saturday morning uh, block of time for confessions from one hour to three hours. So each Saturday of Lent uh, will be from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, and then again in the afternoon from 4 o'clock to 4.45 in our reconciliation room. Uh, Stations of the Cross, uh, that beautiful Lenten devotion where we walk with Christ in the last hours of his life on Friday afternoons at 5.30 p.m., taking place right here at uh, the church. Uh, if you'd like to join us with the school children, that's also at the school gym uh, at 9.15 on the Fridays of Lent. Uh, and then I think there's just like maybe a half dozen more of these Lenten companions. Uh, you can pick one of these up with daily devotionals, reflections, uh, suggestions for uh, penitential acts and uh, some prayers. Uh, so wonderful, no matter if we start today or if we start at the beginning of Lent, uh, continue to deepen in our discipline uh, of prayer. Uh, all are invited this next Wednesday, uh, March 13th, uh, for our uh, next Come to the Table event. Uh, this is at St. Anne's School Cafeteria from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Our CCW uh, will be serving spaghetti and meatballs 
uh, garlic bread, salads. Uh, I didn't write down a dessert, but I hope there's a dessert. There's a dessert, so, so yum, so, and a beverage, so for everyone. So uh, it's a free will offering, uh, so please come and join us again. That's this Wednesday from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Uh, and then on Friday of this week, March 15th, uh, is our St. Anne's School Fish Fry. Uh, this is sponsored by our patrons. All you can eat uh, fish, 4.30 to 7.30 uh, p.m. at the school cafeteria. A full meal, uh, fish with sides, you can choose to eat in. Uh, there are also to-go and delivery options as well. Uh, tickets are available at our script table today. Do we, we don't have, we, it's not available at the script table because we don't have a script person here today. Uh, but you can pick those up from any St. Anne's school family, uh, the parish or school office, or at the door uh, of the event. Again, that's this Friday, March 15th. Uh, you'll notice bins at, at the entrances of the church. Uh, that's uh, for uh, Minnesota Food Share, uh, Food Shelf Month. Uh, we are participating in throughout the month of March. Uh, you can bring in unperishable food items uh, as a donation. Uh, cash donations are also welcome, uh, and that cash actually gets stretched. Uh, they can purchase a lot more uh, with just a little bit uh, of, of, of money. So uh, what I suggest is that you don't put money in the bins, uh, but you put those into the collection basket, clearly marked, and we'll get those to you. Um, and then finally today, I'd like to introduce to you Amy Tolson. Uh, she was our pianist today. She uh, just uh, began at St. Anne's as our new music director. Uh, so we welcome you uh, officially. Uh, and she'll be, you'll be seeing and hearing a lot more from her uh, over the weeks. Uh, she's jumping into Holy Week preparations even as we speak. So uh, welcome. We're very happy to have you. As we conclude our Mass, then let us offer our prayer to the Blessed Virgin as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Our closing hymn is number 485, What Wondrous Love Is This? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul? While millions join the theme, I will sing.